Hi guys, g'day. Hello. So we're sitting here inside what is for a couple more hours our condo downtown Portland. Yeah, a couple and hours here. We go sign it off and we have no home. We have well, we have Varuna. We have Varuna. Yeah. So Varuna is officially at our home. Last time on Adventure Drift, we started to get our wind vane set up and came up with a sketch to get some brackets fabricated. Continued to work on removing an old spreader light. And we got the chance to set off a 30 year old life raft and see how it all worked. So uh, this week on Adventure Drift, we have what? Lots of exciting stuff. Cool. Lots of stuff in store. So last time you guys saw, we kind of got the wind vane and figured out how to position it and got some brackets made up. So now it's time to mount it. So is this where you share like the accidental incorrect holes that I drilled through, yeah. through the boat? Okay. Yeah. It's that. That's fun. And we do a lot of sailing too, actually. That's good. Actually, we so did time. some good sailing lately. Good time. This yeah. video. Yeah. So welcome. Uh, let's start off. Yeah. Welcome our newest patrons. Yeah, big thanks to our newest patrons. We have D'Artagnan and Antonio. Thank uh, you. We also have Karen, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we received an undocumented human mm, that we yeah. will be reporting uh, at a later date uh, for not having the documentation, obviously. <laughs> I don't know where they're from, but clearly they're not allowed to be here. No. We should, we should tell someone. <laughs> um, but thanks very much for all of your support. Everyone out there, especially our patrons, um, you guys really do help us continue to make these videos and we are continuously trying to improve them and make them more informative and hopefully give you something so you can learn from our mistakes. Yeah, and right. if you want to join the journey and become a patron too, uh, check out the link below for Patreon. This go down. So think if we so we go down there. So roughly all we have to do is this. Straight to there like that, so that should sit flat. Mm -hmm. As high as we can get it probably. Yep. After tying the wind vane up, we discovered that the arms didn't fit in the brackets. We hadn't used a precise measuring tool to measure the width. Luckily, we were able to get the edges ground down. So, 60 bucks. 60 bucks to get our brackets fixed. Set up back at the same place we started, it landed behind the chandlery. Thanks to him, on a Saturday, he unlocked the gate, did it there for us. You do are, not do not try like at home. <laughs> yeah, you won't like this. <laughs> Once we got our brackets to fit, we had to figure out where to put them. It's like an inch and an eighth if I do it with the bottom, inch and an eighth this way, an inch if I butt this up to the top. An inch? Yeah. So we're going to look at putting in the brackets, the top brackets here for our, for the wind vane. See my angle, I can't quite tell if I'm straight on here. No, and I can't see it. And I can't turn my bloody head. Holy cow, like my eyes won't focus this close. Is that normal? It's bloody difficult. I'd say, see, I can't get it all the way up, which will lower it a bit more. So I might just go with that there. We spent a lot of time looking at the back of the boat, 
trying to make sure that we had everything measured out correctly so that the vane would be close to centered and the top of the paddle would be slightly out of the water. We needed to try to mount the vane as high as possible but had limited height and room on the transom. It then came time to do the scary thing and start drilling holes in the boat. Once we got the first four holes drilled, stood back and took a look, we realized that we may have made a mistake. The problem is we didn't quite know the angles to mount them and mistakenly we drilled or I drilled incorrect holes here. We realized that the brackets were supposed to be on an angle to increase strength and support, so we had to reposition and drill some extra holes in the boat. So we're trying to get our bracket to fit on. It's not working very well right now. Okay, top one. Once we had the correct holes drilled, it was another challenge getting the holes in the bracket the boat and the backing plate to all line up and put the bolts through. The one that I wasn't able to get on maybe before? Well now it's lining up with the boat, it must not be, yeah that plate doesn't line up. Okay, so the plate needs to move down. Okay, we did it! After we got the top two brackets mounted, we took some time to work on some other projects on Varuna. Smile. Hi. The last face I see I'm before you send, drop me. Send tie of the mask. See if I let him down ever. <laughs> Just leave him up there. As you may have seen in our last few videos, we have had an ongoing spreader light project. Stripping these wires clean. Uh, looks like it might work. We finally got the old light down and I sent Kai up to replace it with a new LED light. Well there she is. All right, so I'm thinking. Once Ty got it all installed, we realized that the wires were dead on that side of the mast. We're not getting anything here, so. Right. Yep. So Ty got to go back up and down the mast a couple more times. So as you have the one on the other side, uh, there's a wiring issue, and we're not getting any power through the wire, which is somewhere inside the mast here. We traced it back to there, so not something we're really concerned about now. But we are going to replace the other one, which came out easy, and I built drilled. All the way through, we're going to put in through bolts since the screws are just kind of hanging here, uh, threaded into the aluminium. Look at that, it's working. It's working! Alright, help. Take me down. It was so exciting to finally check that project off the list, but then it was on to the next electrical project. Having fun here? No. So this is Ty's little workshop in here. This is his favorite place to hang out. In here. So we have these two panels on behind. I'm going to link to this one. This is the new one we got. So this will power all our like our add-ons, I guess, our electronic mm -hmm. stuff. Ty got to become a pro at doing electrical work, which was great because I know next to nothing about how to do this. Alright, so those two ends are done. The, uh, the studs will go on the actual panel. In addition to the extra panel, we installed some extra DC and USB outlets. They're all hardwired in, one at the chart table and one up in the Viber. So. Hillary, we got our delivery we've been debating about for a long time the other day. We did. And we haven't opened it yet. It's been a few days still. So. I know. Let's open it. What is it? It is an Iridium Go satellite hotspot thingy. So we've been looking at uh, what some of the best options are going to be that work for us on how we can get weather offshore and what will be the good mix of affordability with um, our safety level. So everyone has their own level of comfort in terms of safety, uh, where they're comfortable with safety and what works for them. And we wanted to focus a little bit 
more on some newer technologies as well. So we wanted to look at the satellite options and see what's possible there. So we ended up going with Iridium and the Iridium Go, it turns any phone into a sat phone, as well as letting you do some minimal internet type stuff. We use the tracking point so our family mm -hmm. can see us, so maybe basic like messaging. The biggest thing was we really liked receiving the weather on here mm -hmm. with the, the predict wind service. Okay, so let's open this up, see what we've got now. Something else to install. Thought you were done with installing things. Oh, all right, looks like a big piece of... Cable? Yeah. All important SIM cards. Yeah, so I ordered an extra, so the way these work is, and you can select it not to have it activated, so this is not active right now, so we're not paying a bill. Um, so we can keep it until we're ready to activate it. Mm -hmm. Once we've got it all installed is what we'll do. And then we also ordered one more uh, SIM card, mm -hmm. and we can deactivate it at any time and then we don't have to pay a reactivation fee. We just, you know, we've already paid for the SIM card. We put a new SIM card in and we're good to go. Yep. What did we pay all up for this? I want to say it was like $1,200 uh, with maybe $1,250 with the SIM cards mm -hmm. and shipping and all that stuff. Here it is. The all important, I don't know why it's in there, the Iridium Go. Here it is. Cutie. Yeah. So we'll have a look at that more in a minute. Mm. What is that? Ooh. That would be the antenna. The antenna. All right, let's do it. Let's open it up. Your smartphone now works everywhere on the planet. Unless it's an apple. It shows an apple on there. Okay. Let's open this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Iridium everywhere. There it is. Iridium. Oh, look at that. So that's if we want to use it up here, but obviously we don't. She's got the external antenna. Yeah. Alright. Cool. And then this will just pair with our tablets and our phones. Mm -hmm. And the phone the will be, Yeah, and then we make the calls from that. Yeah. And messages and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. At the tracking points. Yep. It's cool. It is very cool. Next, it was time to get back to the wind vane and finally get the bottom mounting brackets on. The first step was to figure out how to position them. There was a surprising amount of up and down play, and we wanted to make sure that we had the arms wedged in tightly so that it would sit securely as possible on the back of Veruna. Looks like it could go up, yeah, just a tiny bit. Go up, I thought it should go down. Negative one, between negative 0.9 and negative one degree. I'm not gonna lift it, but I'm gonna kinda like, oh, I'm gonna sort of lift it, I'm gonna put a bit of force in there. We tied the wind vane up to the boat, and then Ty held everything tightly in place while I traced the holes for the bolts. They look alright? Yeah, I'm just trying to get the corners in there. Then it was time to get the drill out again and hope that we were drilling in the correct spots. We decided to stop and test each one along the way to make sure that they were lining up and double check where our next hole to drill would be. drilled in the correct places. We needed a break and took advantage of some great wind to go out for a sail. So it is like what 85 something degrees today? 80 degrees yeah we got like Walling. 10 12 knots of wind pretty steady. It's up the, uh, it's the Columbia River the I-5 bridge between Washington and Oregon. Washington on your right, Oregon on the left. Cruising along here making some ground against the current slowly but surely. Wind's dead down, coming right out of the east, yeah. so it's a challenge. So we spent the afternoon tacking back and forth, doing our best to go against the wind and the current. We ended up making pretty good ground, but were exhausted by the end of the day. Sailing in the river when the wind is out of the east means you don't get to stay on the same tack for more than three to four minutes. It was great practice though, and we really started to get the hang of tacking our jib through our cutter rig. We also got to go out for a sail with one of our favorite instructors from the ASA classes we took last summer. As a cruiser herself, she had so much great advice and so many stories to share. Uh, Tevikatini is like paradise. 
The only thing is when we first got to Timicatita, we jumped, we were so hot, we've been cruising for three days and we were so hot that, and it was really warm out, and we jumped in the water and swam to shore and our Jack Russell was with us because we had a dog. She swam to shore. We were so just excited to be there with all the other cruisers. We get to shore and they said, obviously you guys didn't read Charlie's charts very good. And I'm saying, yeah, we got here, we're fine. But what's wrong with our boat? It's in the wrong places. No, there's crocodiles in this water. <laughs> <laughs> and they were serious. There's crocodiles oh, nice. in that water. Nice. <laughs> we didn't read that part. <laughs> The weather stayed nice and sunny and windy for quite a long stretch, so we got to get out and get lots of sailing in. While the sun was out and shining, we also got to finally put a name on our dinghy. We named her Makara, which is the half land, half water creature that the god or goddess Varuna, our boat, happens to ride. Yay, Makara! What did you just do? I just named our dinghy. Officially named it. It's upside down. Makara! Like that? Does that look better? Uh, yeah. We got the same font as on the back of our boat. It says Varuna, so they go together just like they do. Varuna rides Makara, but I think Makara's going to be riding on Varuna more often. <laughs> Lazy. Lazy dinghy. Unfortunately, it can't all be fun and sunshine, and sometimes there's dirty work to do. I'm going to change the joker valve in the head down here. So I have a replacement joker valve. Got some gloves tray to catch, unfortunately the waist, and edge to a flathead screwdriver. See how simple this really is, eh? The joker valve is a one-way valve that prevents the waist in the pipes from backing up into the bowl. That's the joker valve down on that, that white arm, so I'm going to take that arm out and the joker valve is sitting right in here behind these flatheads. It's recommended that the valves are changed once every year. It turns out it actually wasn't that hard of a job at all, and it wasn't even that messy. But now the head is uh, beautiful and crisp clean. So these four holes need to be filled, and that's what I'm doing today. Um, we needed to have it on a 45 angle, so I've got four extra holes to fill, which sucks, but it could have been worse, and they're not below the waterline or anything like that, so it should be easy. And I'm actually going to go extra on it. I'm going to back it with some fiberglass, three layers, I think maybe, two to three layers of fiberglass behind. Then I can re-drill, uh, re-drill through the other holes, and the four that we're trying to fill, I will fill from this side with marine techs. Epoxy putty stuff. It actually turned out looking pretty good on the back side. It's actually pretty smooth on the back side even. It looks good and it feels solid. So I've covered the the actual the correct holes and uh, used some acetone and just give it a really good clean. I've got my gloves and I'm going to use Marine Tex putty. So I'll mix these together. Fill these four holes. Here are our mistake holes all filled up and the fiberglass on the back and then filled them in with some marine tech and sanded it all down. We're gonna put the back brackets on. Lori's here measuring, well, taking pictures to see if we need to shim these at all. There is a one, real minor gaps behind these. So there's definitely more on that side than on the 
the starboard, yeah, I think you're right, the starboard side, I don't see anything on that at all. We may just shim it so we don't get any kind of movement working against it. All right, so this is our Fleming major wind vane installed, um, almost completely. Pretty set, we're about ready to start testing this baby. Um, once we've got those last in, we can rig it. We do need to mount some um, blocks and figure out how we're going to do that. So that's our next step. So we're almost done with the wind vane, our last steps, which you'll see, mm -hmm. we'll leave it for next time. We just need to put some butyl tape around to seal it up. Yep. Do the final mounting of the brackets, our last time putting, putting the vane on the boat, hopefully. Mm -hmm. and do our control lines and we're almost done. Yeah, we're excited about that. Very so. excited. Yeah, so stay tuned. We are getting closer and closer to our departure date from Portland. We are beginning our search for crew for the passage from the Oregon coast down to Southern California. If you are in the Portland or Seattle area and would be interested in joining as crew, We'd love to meet up and talk to you. Send us a message. You can click the contact link on our website or in the description below. So thanks for watching and see you next time. See you later. Bye. Good. Whoa! Why are you doing it like a princess? Hello! Hello! Echo! Echo! Don't make those comments. Don't do it. to all of our patrons. You too can join us as we sail with a purpose. Click the Patreon logo to learn more. If you enjoyed our video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for our latest updates, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching and see you next time.